What's going on y'all, it's your boy Tory G here, back by popular demand for you today to show you guys how to set up my quick and easy drag and drop or cut and paste uh, macros so you can move fast and quickly in your recording sessions. So the first thing you wanna set up is your template. Your uh, template should work with this workflow. For me, I use of the drag and drop method where I have one dedicated recording track and the rest of these are playback tracks for when I'm ready to, you know, have place the audio or the takes where they need to go. So typically what happens is you would record like so, record the takes, okay? And then whatever he said or she said, you would grab that region, bring it down, select where the next take should start, we start recording, stop the recording and then drag your next take down and then so far and so forth now this is cool and all however these macros would solve the problem of of keeping the vibe up keeping the momentum for the artist so you can just you know you, your left hand's working one thing your right hand's working the mouse and you're continuously moving and rocking with the artist so that it feels like the song is progressing rather than taking these pauses to do your edits and whatnot okay so again make sure you have your template ready to go and let's go ahead and start building a macro the next step you want to do to start building a macro is hit the studio one button up here find the macro organizer button okay and let's just create a new macro. When creating a macro, you get a macro edit macro window. So let's just go ahead and call this one. I like to call mine cut and paste to next. That's what I name mine. You can name yours, whatever, but this will be the first of two macros you'll need, okay? And if you want to subgroup or sub name them, that helps them or be more organized when you go and select them further on down the line. These commands on this side of the window tell Studio One to do certain things. Macros are basically a series of commands that tells Studio One to execute it off of one trigger, basically. So let's go ahead and start it, all right? so. The first command that you want to add is, which is part of the edit commands. So if you type edit, all these different edit commands will come up. These are categories, right? And the first one you want to put is split range, or you can just type split range or split. Boom, split range. So whatever you put your range over, your fir the first thing you're going to do is put your range, select, and then it's going to split it based off of whatever you've got highlighted. The next thing is cut, edit, cut. So these are gonna go in series. First is gonna split the range you've, you've highlighted, then cut it, which means kind of like, like if you ever worked in Word or whatever, it'll cut, it'll take that um, piece and put it in like what is so-called like a clipboard and hold it to where you decide to paste it at, okay? The next command is actually a navigation command. So you want to navigate. Okay, navigation. And the one you want to find is um, next track. Okay. So, or you can just type next track. All right. Boom. Navigation, next track. This is telling Studio One to go to the next track after your record track or whatever track you have highlighted and you will then hit paste now be careful which one you pick paste at original position is the most important and i'll tell you why so this is the this is the basic series of commands you want this first macro to execute okay and so what it's going to do is going to take your range cut it navigate to the next track and paste it now the difference between paste and paste out original position is this. If you use regular paste, it'll paste it wherever your market marker is, okay? Which is not what we want to do. Most of the time, the markers are all, all the way down the line there or somewhere else. You want it to paste at original position 
where let's say you cut it over here and then it goes down, it'll paste it at the same point in time, same point in time that it was on the other track, okay? So this will be the second one. So what you're gonna do here is add next track again, okay? So this is basically track uh, the next track after the record track and then the next track after that one, which will be this one here, okay? And then again, paste at original position. So what that'll do, once you got your, like, let's say he has a first take and then he'll do his second take uh, or his next punch, I'm sorry, the next punch in, all you'll do is select that next punch and, and then this command will take it to the second track underneath the first punch track, okay? So that's how you do, you make, you're make you making Studio One go one, two, it'll count the, to the next track, okay? So this is, these are the series of commands that you will use to set up your macro. So just take, pause the, if you have to pause the video, you can, and copy these over there. Uh, copy these to your macro settings. Okay. So once you have your macro set up, it'll somewhere, somewhere in, in your macros here, it'll um, be saved. Quickly, you can actually hit a shortcut here, or if you don't happen to have this window open, you just go Studio One, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then boom. So once you have your sh Keyboard Shortcut window open, all you have to do is search the name that you named that macro. So mine is Cut to Next, or Cut and Paste to Next, okay? And you wanna assign that to key commands that are easy for you to get to. Again, remember, we are doing this for recording sessions, right? So check this out. Mine is on my left hand, Shift A for the first cut, Shift Z, which is right underneath it for the next cut. So logically, you will feel like you're going up and down. So the first one, Shift A is number one, Shift Z is the next one. That's how I have my key command set up. And boom, once you've assigned, once you've entered your key command and assigned it to your macro, it should populate here that you have these keys assigned to these macros, okay? And you can do this with any macro you design or with any macro that's already kind of built or, or any other macro or key command that's, um, that's available from Studio One. And you can actually go on to Prestonus Exchange and import macros. So think about those. All right, all right. So now that we have our uh, key commands mapped, let's go and set up some settings that will help make this a smooth process. So in your main edit window, hit the, the wrench tool and let's do, you can either do no overlap when editing events um, or you can do overlap, which however it works for you. I like to leave no overlap off because when I get to editing and pasting, sometimes I need that overlap. You may not like it, but whatever works for you, you wanna make sure the automation follows events in case you have to move those clips around. Uh, monitoring follows record and then monitoring mutes playback. So this is a big one. So if you're gonna be recording on this track, okay, let's say I got a big recording going on, boom. And let's say um, he just wants to do it over. All you have to do is hit record again and it'll, he'll still remain hearing his audio. The thing you have to remember though is this. If you don't have this set up, he will hear whatever was recorded, he or she will hear whatever was recorded before. So you wanna mute the playback on the record track so it doesn't like confuse them or, or trip them up because you want everything behind there to be muted. Um, Cause that's how I do it. I just quickly just record over it. You know what I'm saying? And that's how that goes. Now, another set setting you wanna make sure you have set up is over, up here in your topmost bar, cursor follows edit position, okay? This is important because once you select your range, it'll put your cursor back to the top of that range, okay? And what that's gonna do is ensure that your cursor is back to the top so that you have enough pre-roll once you start recording again. And I'll show you how that works. 
So back to doing that. So let's say we're recording. He says this take. The cursor jumps back to back to where I needed to go or to the top. Now, after I select things, you see how things change? It ensures that this moves with my cursor. And I say I wanted to go to the next available track. I hit Shift A, boom, I got my take. Noticed how it pasted it exactly underneath in the same place. That's why that paste at original position is important is it'll take this and paste it exactly where it needs to go. And, you, and it ensures that you don't put things out of time. All right, let's start recording again. Give them some pre-roll, listen to that first track, first take. All right, we got a new take, it overlaps a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit Shift Z. Boom, it brings it down to the next one, okay? And let's say, so, let's say um, you, he wants this, he decides later this needs to be an ad-lib. You grab this again, see how the edit first, the, the cursor follows edit position. You can actually just use the same command to just continuously bring it down. Or if you wanna do it even faster, hit shift Z, it'll take it to every other track. It helps very quickly, okay? And it feels like once one command, one move. That's what I love about that. The next thing you wanna do is go ahead and rock out and have fun. Boom. He's got that. Boom. Let's quickly select shift A. Boom. All right. You can actually even start recording. You can actually even, if you give them yourself enough pre-roll, let's say you hit O on your keyboard, give yourself some pre-roll. It'll give you some time to, to go ahead and um uh grab your piece, right? Give them some more pre-roll from, from earlier. Let's say you grab a piece from over here. You don't even got to worry about it. It's already there. Boom. Stop them recording again. Grab. Oops. Grab. Uh, make sure you got your mark, your marquee tool. You can actually go right here, but I like the smart tool. So the top half of your, your, um, the top half of your take is where your marquee tool will come in and play. So all you got to do is make sure that that cross hat, that crosshair is up there. Shift a boom, start recording again. Uh, boom boom he'll start recording all right grab this take boom boom even if you don't immediately start your playback again it's still just that much faster okay grab this take over here oh see you can even undo that real quick boom grab that start back again and he will and they will not feel like they are being held up by the engineer moving and trying to figure out where things are supposed to go I hope this video helps. Let me know if you have any further questions. Um, follow me on Instagram. All my socials are mixed by Tori G. If you want this recording template, this is stock Studio One stuff minus a Waves tune because currently Studio One doesn't have automatic um, pitch correction. But this is my quick and easy start recording template and it has a mastering chain mix it mix bus chain if you want this um you can find the link at the bottom of the video and you can grab this for a low fee um and that actually helps me out to keep doing what i love for you guys um and boom y'all have a good day again let me know if you have any questions y'all take it easy tori g out